Grace to you and peace in the name of Jesus Christ. Today is March 25th. It is the Feast of the Annunciation, a day in which the church honors and celebrates that story of the angel Gabriel coming to young Mary to let her know that she is to conceive a child, which seems pretty remarkable in itself. But then it gets even more remarkable. That child is to be named Jesus, and that Jesus is to be the Son of God. Not just remarkable. I would call the story pretty crazy. God breaking into this world using, say, a 13-year-old, 14-year-old, poor, unknown girl named Mary in the middle of nowhere, a place called Palestine. And yet, that's exactly who God is and how God continues to work, breaking into the world, breaking our molds, our understandings, because the largesse of God only grows. The love of God is only expansive, not contracting, but expanding. And that is a beauty for us to remember in the story. That's also our hope in the midst of this very moment, where it seems like life is contracting. It seems like the world is closing down. It seems like there isn't a lot of mystery and marvel and grace until we hear yet again those words from this story that nothing is impossible for God. Nothing is impossible for God. In Mary, here, here am I. Utilize me, God. Utilize me. So we enter into this middle of the week, in the middle of this pandemic, as things around us continue to be unclear, as the uncertainties of what comes next and uh, how impactful this moment will be in our life, in the life of those around us. We come to all that and still hear those words, right? Nothing is impossible. And that God is using us, our frailties, our vulnerabilities, our, even through our sinfulness, to continue to love and to reach beyond ourselves, to, to bring the healing of the nations, to reconcile what needs to be reconciled, to redeem all things, to restore all things. So do not ever doubt what God is doing through you, through me, through us together, even if we are gathered through the Spirit, in our homes and apartments. Please know the world needs us just as much as the world needed young Mary to say, here I am, use me, or I am open to your Spirit, or yes, it can be done because nothing is impossible. So we continue to pray, we continue to wash our hands, we continue to social distance, we continue to make masks, we continue to do everything possible to strain with the best gifts God's given us in our mind and our heart, our inspiration and perspiration. That's what it means to love God and our love our neighbor. But we also do so knowing that it is God that we follow. It is God who is breaking into the world in ways that are inconceivable, crazy, and truly remarkable. Sometimes we need to step back and to truly listen to God, how God is speaking to us, to step back from the own busyness of our own lives, to step back from the the fearfulness that infringes upon our ability to really hear the cries of the poor or even God's loud voice saying, hey, I want to use you in some pretty amazing ways in these weeks to come. Let us pray. God, we thank you for stories that continue to motivate us, stories that speak to who you are and how you engage both our needs, our wants, but also the needs of this world and those around us. Continue to heal those in ICU rooms around the world, continue to uh, work through medicines, continue to work through the amazing folks on the front lines and those feeding our stomachs and those educating our kids online and and the parents at homes and grandparents 
distance from their grandkids. There's so many things going on, and we thank you for the many ways which you are providing, and we ask for your ongoing mercy and grace upon those providing for us. We thank you for the church. May we continue to shine brightly right now to be part of that expansiveness of your love for all. It's in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Grace and peace.